tax benefits from it if you call it a disease and like and it goes it's a mess any case as the hsa account beneficiary you can pay these expenses for medical care for yourself your spouse and your dependents so even though non-prescription medicines other than insulin do not qualify for medical and dental expense deduction they do qualify as expenses for hsa purposes the cost of uh, menstrual care products tampons pads liners cups sponges or other similar products that made me a little uncomfortable to read that whole thing are also reimbursed for hsa purposes so amounts you pay for personal protective equipment such as masks hand sanitizer and sanitizing uh, wipes for you your spouse and your dependents for the primary purpose of preventing the spread of, of COVID-19 are treated as medical expenses. The cost of home testing for COVID-19 for you, your spouse, your dependents is an eligible medical expense. Okay, you cannot treat insurance premiums as qualified medical expenses unless the premiums are for long-term care. So now we have the qualifications of, of health insurance, which gets again, kind of, kind of tricky because you have basically, you know, the, the general health insurance, which might be your high deductible plan that you're in. But if you go over a certain age, then you have the Medicare kind of system that might be then the normal kind of insurance. And then you have the long-term care insurance, which is generally thought of, of insurance against being basically like needing full-time care uh, uh, of, of basic kind of things, which is kind of an, a whole nother thing in and of itself. So healthcare uh, conting uh, continuation coverage, such as coverage under uh, COBRA. So if you leave your job and you have continuation coverage, the COBRA is supposed to help so you don't lose the insurance and then possibly need to purchase it again, in which case it sometimes could be difficult to do, possibly because of preconditions and so on. So healthcare coverage while receiving unemployment compensation under federal or state law or Medicare and other health care uh, coverage if you were 65 or older other than premiums for Medicare supplemental policies such as Medigap. Okay, high deductible health plan. And HDHP, high deductible health plan, is a, is a health plan that meets the following requirements. So you have the minimum annual uh, deductible so for the self only 1500 for the family 3000 and then the maximum annual out of pocket expenses 7500 and 15000 so a lot of times when you hunt down the plans they're they're more pretty pretty explicit about whether they qualify or don't qualify say as a high deductible plan but there's that technical kind of uh, of qualification uh, for it figuring your HSA deduction the maximum amount that can be contributed to your HSA depends on the type of high deductible health plan coverage you have. If you have self only coverage, your maximum contribution is 3,850. If you have family coverage, your maximum contribution is 7,750. Note, if you are age 55 or older at the end of your tax year, you can make an additional contribution of 1,000. Your maximum contribution is reduced by any employer contributions to your HSA, any contributions made to your Archer MSA, and any qualified HSA funding distributions. You can make deductible contributions to your HSA even if your employer made contributions. However, if you or someone on your behalf made contributions in addition to any employer contributions and qualified HSA funding distributions, you may have to pay an additional tax. So you cannot deduct any contributions for any month in which you were enrolled in Medicare. Also, you cannot deduct contributions if you are someone else's dependent for 2023.